Let's let's go ahead and jump into the first game on the board here in Baylor, a 27 to 14 winner over Oklahoma. Lincoln Riley, quit your bitching, man. Like what are you with? such a baby? <laughs> I swear to God, if 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 all the rumors are true, which I don't think there's an inkling of truth to them, by the way, if all the rumors are true and he ends up being the next LSU head coach, I'm going to be furious. I I could understand it. it I, and it's not because he's not a good coach. It's because I don't think he's a good person. Yeah. I think this guy's a piece of trash. He It's just, it gets so frustrating listening to him complain like they don't get the benefit of the doubt all the all time. The time. And what does it matter if you lose by 10 or by 13? Forget the code. The code it's, went out the door forever. He, and, he wants to talk about code when it benefits him or hurts him. He doesn't ever want to talk about it when it's him doing something shitty, not to a school, not to another opponent or another grown man coach across the field. No, but when he, the person in power, is doing it to a kid that has no power in the situation. That's my problem with Lincoln Riley. His hypocrisy knows no bound. But by the way, and I'm sick of it. Those that don't know what Chris is talking about, Chandler Morris, who is now starting for TCU because of Max Duggan's injury. Chandler Morris was a quarterback at Oklahoma, and he wanted to transfer to TCU, and Lincoln tried everything he could to block it until the media yep. just absolutely crucified him. And then, obviously, he allowed it, the waiver to go through, whatever. But, it dude, would have been approved. That's the problem. 80% of Oklahoma's recruit that came in last year were all transfers. So he had no problem taking other kids' transfers, but you want to leave his program? Oh, no, 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 no. And he will tell you the difference is, is well, I didn't take kids from in-conference. That's because you took nothing but defensive players, and your conference doesn't play a whole hell of a lot of defense. True. True. 100%. You're a piece of crap. You're a hypocrite, and I don't, I don't want it. Uh, Caleb Williams yesterday, 10 out of 19, 146 yards and two interceptions. They ended up pulling him for Spencer Rattler. And I think he got hurt in that game. I don't did he, like, did he get like, hurt? He was, he was limping around after a couple of plays. I wondered, they never really said, did he bench him because they didn't think he was getting it done? And or maybe just he just didn't have enough. Else. Yeah, he didn't have enough left. I, I think he needed to walk something off because it was a leg injury. He was limping a little bit. And I think they realized, okay, if his wheels aren't there, we need to let him sit for a minute. They threw Spencer in. Spencer almost threw a pick his very first play. And I just thought that would have been just the icing on the damn cake right there. Yeah. That dumb bastard. <laughs> Spencer went four out of six for 36 yards. No touchdowns. No picks. Uh, Caleb Williams, 10 rushes for 17 yards and one touchdown. Baylor locked him up. 28 carries for 78 yards for Oklahoma on the ground that you don't typically see that. Oklahoma only had 260 yards, and this is now three straight years that Dave Aranda's defense has been able to lock up Lincoln Riley, and I can't imagine what it's going to be like when Oklahoma gets into the SEC. Larry Pilgrim jumped in. He said, I was thinking about Riley leaving Oklahoma, and it made no sense. Then I thought, once Oklahoma gets to the SEC, who would you rather be the coach of? Uh, I would rather be at LSU. Well, yeah, yeah. No, I, think, I think almost everybody nationally agrees with that, except for people kind of around the Big 12 you know, propaganda machine. LSU's basically made won three national championships, made it to four with three different coaches over 20 years. And two of those coaches are widely seen as incompetent. It, it's really hard to not think if you're a competent coach, I can go win at LSU. Yes, 100%. Derek Miller said he was throwing foolish interceptions. Spencer Radler, good arm, no leader. Yeah, uh, Ball Python Love said, can I promote something? Hey, jump in. Promote whatever you want to promote, brother. It is all good. Which, by the way, uh, Ball Python Love is, is starting a YouTube channel or has started a YouTube channel. Go and check him out. Good dude. Good stuff over there. We, we promote and encourage anybody that is starting out in this crazy, crazy sports media world. Uh, so go and check him out. Do, do, do him a favor. Baylor, 413 yards of total offense. They only had 117 yards passing. And what Oklahoma has been pretty good at this season was stopping the run. Well, Baylor had 296 yards on the ground. Jerry Bohannon, nine attempts for 107 yards. Smith had 20 attempts for 148 yards. They, they were awesome. This was, this was a perfect game plan. Dave Aranda doing his thing on defense, locking down Lincoln Riley's offense. They couldn't do anything. This is... This is crazy. I mean, Derek Miller said it was a matter of time for Oklahoma to lose. They were flirting with defeat. And now they still have Iowa State, who is going to be fired up. Which, by the way, Iowa State, perfect example.
Let's see. I don't know what has happened. Your mic completely cut out. I, I, I see this. It, it, it popped up on the thing. All right. You're back now. All right. So I'm good now. All right. So what I was, what I was flirting with disaster. Okay. It just switched again. I don't know what the hell's happening. The IT guy. This, yeah, this I, is I am the IT being guy. The guy. of the show. This is, Do this is insane. Do whatever you want. And you're a moron. <laughs> All right, I think I'm I think I'm good now. I think I think I'm okay. Microphone, all right. All right. And speaker, all right. Now we should be fine. It looks like it's still coming through. <laughs> good lord. Hey, have you got me now? I can hear you perfectly. Okay. I don't know if everybody else can or not, but I can. And we'll we'll see. And, we'll I, see. and I don't know if they can hear us. Well, I'm sure if everybody can jump into the chat and let us know if you can hear me, that would be wonderful. Sparta said cut out again. Larry Pilgrim said audio. And Justin said the person that wants to make a pitch is sabotaging. Ball Python Love said I got Chris this Thursday live on my channel. Can't wait. All right. So Neosaur L said we can. Okay, good, good, good. Let's dive back into this breakdown here. The So the discussion here was Oklahoma flirting with disaster. And I thought because they had... They had kind of turned the corner with Caleb Williams on offense. They would be able to do something here. They they still have Iowa State and Oklahoma State left. That's going to be a problem. That's yeah. I mean they they are not good enough to to really be able to beat those state like they can beat them, but the other team will have to make mistakes. They I don't, can't beat I them don't straight think up. They can beat Oklahoma State. I think I don't know that they can at, beat Iowa. I think, State. They, I think that games at Oklahoma State and I. I think Oklahoma State's going to be favored. I think they're going to be favored by like a touchdown. I think they're going to beat them up pretty bad too. Iowa State, what I was saying is, Iowa State is the perfect example of a team that cannot afford to look ahead, and yet they've been caught doing it multiple times this year. They they are not talented enough to just beat teams. Like without Correct. showing up 100% on that day. They just lost to Texas Tech yesterday. Should have seen it coming because they've got Oklahoma next week. Like, and and it would not surprise me. Uh, Larry Pilgrim said Oklahoma State can copy Baylor's game defensively. 100%. Yes, they can. Uh, also, also, this is this is going to be insane. Iowa State can do this defensively to Oklahoma. Yeah, I think Iowa State can. I, I, I question Iowa State's. Well, see, here's the thing. That what Iowa State does great on offense is run the football. So, that, that if, you know, they can copy this game plan verbatim. I trust them to run the football more than I trust Brock Purdy, but you and me have been this way for the last three years with him. You trust him more than I do. He shows up in big games and he falls apart in big games. They need him to not screw this thing up, not turn the ball over. It's 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 going to be insane next year. It's just insane. Derek Miller, I know this is a college network. Please, Pittsburgh Steelers, don't lose to the Detroit Lions. Great show, guys. Oh, oh well, oh, no, no big Ben today. So I hope, I hope they lose. <laughs> Listen, I, for the first time in a long time, somebody just lost their starting quarterback, and the line didn't move at yeah. all. Well, I say that it happened. The last time this happened was this year when two went down, and the line yeah. didn't move at all. Line didn't move. And that's the way it goes. There's Jim a John quarterback play out there in the NFL right now. Yes, there is. Jim John said we can hear. That is certainly good. All right. So, uh, so my question here was, uh, or my my only two notes were: WTF is Oklahoma and Lincoln Riley bitching? Well, <laughs> Oklahoma is exactly what we thought they were. It's what at least I would tell you this: for all of the tomfoolery that the committee did, and all of the problems that I have with the committee, they got Oklahoma right, and they realized this is an undefeated team that we just know doesn't deserve to be undefeated. They they have scraped by beating bad teams, and they look bad doing it. Look at the miracle that it took to beat Texas, and now look at the shit team that Texas is. Yeah, Texas. We're, we're going to talk about Texas in a minute. But you see what I'm saying? Like, I, oh, I know what when you're you look, about. When you look at their resume, they don't have a single good win on them. They got eight of them, nine of them, but they don't have a single good one on there. Yeah, yeah, that's... I, yes, you're 100 percent right. I mean, there's not a good one. The the Nebraska win, like we know, it was a tough win. Nebraska's played everybody tough, all that. But Nebraska also only has three wins on the season. So, like, yeah. I mean, what are we talking about here? Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter at Gary WCE at Chris B Giannini. 
at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.